Emma, let's reflect on this with our next guest, because we do not have a written constitution uh, in this country. We kind of make it up as we go along. Uh, let's turn to a constitutional historian, Rafe Hadel-Mancou, to reflect on that. Rafe, welcome to you. Uh, uh, we've, we've talked to a couple of barristers in the last hour or thereabouts who are deeply uncomfortable with a situation where one of the country's smallest police forces is going to make a determination that could ultimately very much have a, a big impact on the future political direction of this country. Uh, how should we look at this constitutionally? Well, first of all, I should say that um, Colin Schadenfreude is deeply unchristian in motion, and so I'm going to have to go to confession this week, as I've rarely seen someone hoisted on their own petard quite so spectacularly. And it is quite amazing to think that there is a major incident room at Durham uh, looking into this incident, you know, major incident rooms are normally given to things like kidnappings and murders. Uh, I'm not sure, so sure that it is worrying constitutionally because this is a catastrophic mess created by Keir Starmer, who has created this so-called constitutional crisis. And I'm actually not sure that this statement goes far enough because you have to remember it was Keir Starmer who wanted Boris Johnson to resign the moment that the police investigation started. No ifs or buffs or buts. Innocent until proven guilty wasn't in this lawyer's lexicon when it came to Partygate. So if he is indeed a man of principle, there can be only one conclusion, and that's that he needs to resign. He doesn't need to resign because of the curry and beer, as Emma and others have said. Um, it's, you know, it's rank stupidity to have some of these rules in place. But uh, it's the hypocrisy, it's the obfuscation, it's the self-righteousness. And, you know, hypocrisy is what the British voters detest more than anything else. And Keir knows that. He, after all, was the man with the great catchphrase, it's one rule for them and it's one rule for us. Well, it appears as if he's a them, not an us. Right. Yeah. I, you know, oh, you put it so beautifully, Rafe, but I just wonder that the lawyers may be outraged whether the public will be too. Well, I'm actually, one thing no one has raised really is why actually has this all come to light now after the local elections? I find this fascinating, you know. If this information had come to light, the, the extra information, I mean, that caused Durham to do this had come a few weeks or months ago, would we have seen a different result in the elections? I imagine Labour would have got pummeled a bit more. Uh, maybe it would have gone to the Lib Dems rather than the Tories. I find that rather, rather interesting. But I think the public do concern, are concerned about this. Remember, Lisa Nandy quite rightly warned him not to go full throttle on Partygate. We've got to deal with the energy crisis, the cost of living crisis, NHS backlogs, uh, the Ukraine crisis, and we focus for the last few weeks and, and months, particularly through Keir Starmer at, at, at Prime Minister's questions, on Growlergate, you know, on misogyny, on uh, Partygate, on the cakes, such inconsequential, superficial things of interest only to the media bubble of Westminster and media, and ignoring the facts that concern the British public. So I think that they will be concerned that he has been hoisted on his own petard for focusing on these very issues. Thanks so much. Rafe Hadelmanku joining us there. Uh